I have moved the painting that was the subject of the initial posting on from the last entry, and I think it's meaningful to summarise what appears to be manifesting. To recap, we looked at how we might go about setting out a vision space painting as we require entirely different preparatory processes to that for central perspective and picture space. Peripheral vision utilises a specific type of noise that can be termed disorder as opposed to blur. References to relevant scientific papers can be found at the end of the presentation. The disorder increases incrementally from fixation in X, Y and Z axes from a selected fixation. This is the painting as it stands now. If we look at the lower right portion in isolation, we can consider that individual spatial cues in terms of size of brushstroke are floating. There's a probability-like feel to the presentation or promotion of cue values to consciousness. A spatial cue manifests from an all-possibilities field. Its fleeting value only has meaning with respect to the entirety of the data set. When in front of the actual painting, and attention is reverted back to the fixation point on the hands, the floating status of the cue in extreme peripheral vision are almost imperceptible. As we move close to the fixation point, the density of individual cues increases. It's more difficult to perceive the field. Object definition and surface-like assumptions start to emerge. However, it's only in central or macular vision where the system behind spatial cue values development with respect to the field is entirely passed over for smooth surface and form perception requiring higher levels of detail. Even with the fixation held on the fingernail of the hand touching the palm, do notice that the system of data presentation in peripheral vision can cope with quite high levels of detail, even if that detail is always set in terms of the texture, like grain, of its rendering system. It's just possible to make me out the easel and the reflection of the window in the lamp head. Size of brush stroke is just one strategy that can be adopted to indicate the dark values within peripheral vision. Here I've tiered the rendering system, where the initial brush stroke references the primary value. This area, encompassed by the brush stroke, can then be subdivided by four or five individual brush strokes. Each of the second tier of brush strokes can be assigned a different colour to discern finer differentiation within the set. These second tier brush strokes are made at 90 degrees to the original, and it's even possible for a third tier to be introduced, again at 90 degrees to the second. We can now look more closely at the patterns, or textures, and relate them to those rendered by Cezanne in his paintings of the tree. If we look in isolation at areas typically some distance from the fixation, we find patterns that would not, with a bit of imagination, be out of place in an abstract expressionist exhibition. Artists have for centuries learned to address the entirety of phenomenal field and have been developing strategies for rendering the true nature of the peripheral vision data set. This field rendering system is potentially extremely efficient in terms of bandwidth, but the suggestion is that it also provides us with our independent, fast route system to awareness of spatial movement, proximity and orientation. 